teach my people how to pray. Because he said, I've taught you prayer through your affliction. You don't learn how to pray by reading a book. You learn how to pray by praying. Karavu shatakahaya. Aluka valiva zumba lahavaya. Hey, kidaboho shata. Somebody say, hey, 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 hey. You don't know, you don't know what prayer is till the devil knocks your door and invade and, ta- and try to take your only child. Are you hearing me like a mother? Then something breaks forth in the inside of you and you will scream and pray like you've never prayed before and tell the devil, loose my baby. Take your hands off my baby. I take my baby back. One of my daughters was in a very difficult situation in childbearing and I was praying flying. And the Lord said to me over 35,000 feet above sea level. He said, when you land in D.C., go to the hospital and take your daughter out of the hands of the enemy. He said, son, go to the hospital and by parental authority, take her out of the hands of the enemy and tell the grave, death and hell, you can't have her. And everything was crazy until I went there and I stood by her bed and I said, girl, you are my baby. And I'm taking you out of the hands of the enemy. And I said, I invoke divine restraining order over death, over hell, and over the grave. You can't have her. She's mine. I take her. I buy her back. I redeem her by the blood from the hand of the enemy. Shatahaka. Somebody lift up your hands and pray in other tongues right now. Shatakaha, Shatakaha, Lakata Bahaya, Malagata Lavataza, Italaganda Labo. Somebody break forth, let the river slow. Somebody open your mouth, somebody break forth. Don't hold back. Shata, Ikataya, Madarakatanda, Meleteke, Ishato, Lagreto, Melefasu, Ilapalala Gite, E Kitala Maga, Gadali Shata, Ile Katumalahaga, Ibalanda Lamahaya, E Igondolomo Shatakaba. Jesus. Give me two minutes. Hear me. Chad, I want you to look at me. I'm not a dawn and a doom prophet. But I come to tell you, unless we adopt prayer as a lifestyle, he's going to smite the shepherds of the church. And many mega churches are going to go down. In the early 70s, in the early 70s, most of the mega churches, Papa will tell you, he's been around for a long time. And the only reason why he has prevailed and still remain anointed at the cutting edge is not because he's better than so many of his friends who have died and gone to be with the Lord. But I travel with Papa and even at his age, he will still fast and he will still pray until the meeting is over before he eats. And there are so many preachers today who will never fast. And who will never pray because we know all the technicalities and we know what to say and make the people laugh and happy and all that. Oh, forget it. That is not going to change this world. The world is looking for power. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's looking for people that will say, that say as the Lord. And it comes to pass within 24 hours. Are you hearing me, somebody? The Muslims pray five times a day all their lives as a lifestyle the jews pray three times a day all their life as a lifestyle they do it whether they are happy or not whether they are under attack or not whether they are blessed or not uh, whether whether they are sad or happy they just do it it's a lifestyle how many times does the believer praise a day and you think you stand a chance because the Muslims are not just praying. They are invoking all kinds of entities. 
They're dealing with all kinds of forces in Pleiades, in Aturos, in Orion, in Mazarod, the Zodiacs, the powers of the underworld, the water kingdom. They are not just praying. They are dealing with white magic, black magic. They're dealing with different levels and dimensions of witchcraft. For total takeover of the world and of our nations. And all we do is to pray one or two times and think we've made it. No, unless prayer becomes a lifestyle continuously. Praying in the morning, praying in the afternoon, praying in the evening, praying in the night, praying at midnight. Unless we follow the four seasons and the four watches of the day and the four watches of the night and praying consistently when prayer becomes a lifestyle so you pray whether you feel like praying or not you pray when you are broke and you pray when you are blessed and you pray when you are down and you pray when you are up because prayer is a necessity for survival and for the maintenance of daily victory for the believer Today in our conferences and in our meetings, there is no prayer. We have so much word and word and word and word and that preacher and that preacher and that preacher. And the atmosphere is all just emotions and there is no fire. And there is no fire and there is no presence and there is no unction and anointing to destroy the yoke. It's not the preaching that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that the preacher brings to the meeting that breaks the yoke. And anointing don't come. By just preaching, anointing comes when you've spent time in the secret place and he breathes upon you. Ah, Jesus, Jesus said the other time, he said, when you pray, shut the door behind you. Then he said, pray unto your father who is in what? Secret. So the secret place of the most high is the place of prayer. And we need to go back to the place of prayer. So many of you came that far through prayer. And now we succeeded. We are very anointed. And we have everything. We are very sophisticated. So we're trying to use our head and our mind to intellectualize God. You cannot navigate through the end time storms. If you don't go back to the place of prayer. Whatever made you who you are and what you are. You have to constantly maintain it. If you came to where you are to prayer, please don't let your success and how much money you have in your bank account and how many thousands you preach to get into your head because one attack of the enemy can take everything out. Let my prayers be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. Look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 10 and 11. The Bible said when all the people were praying outside at the time of incense. And the Bible said an angel of the Lord appeared to Zacharias the high priest standing on the right hand side of the altar of incense. The angel appeared at the time of what? Incense. And ladies and gentlemen, the time of incense is the time of prayer. And angels don't appear until prayer goes up. And heaven, it is unlawful for heaven to respond and to intervene in the affairs of humanity or family, cities, community, nations until prayer goes up. Because hear me ladies and gentlemen. If God intervenes in the affairs of men without incense, which is prayer going up, Satan will accuse the justice of heaven. Because it's unlawful. The earth God gave to man, man gave it to the devil. Now even though Jesus has died and shed his blood, Satan legally steals owes and controls Adam's lease on the planet. Because Adam's lease on the planet has not yet expired. That's why the demon says, have thou come to destroy us before our time. So they have a time and their time is time sensitive. 
And so the only thing that holds back the adversary and blocks the adversary is the prayers of the saints. And when the saints don't pray, Satan has a legal right to do as he pleases. That's why the Bible says pray without season. It means that any season of your life that you give up praying, you hand over that season of your life to the devil. The Bible said men ought to always pray and not to faint. We're dealing with an enemy and just hear me, the enemy don't play fair. Please believe me, this devil don't play fair. I know him. I know him. He tried to take me out from my mother's womb. I experienced him when my mother took seed of me. She bled and she became anemic. And the doctor said, Do Florence, you can't make it with this situation. You're bleeding too bad. You are weak. You are anemic. You can't carry this pregnancy. And they went in and performed a DNC to get rid of me. And months after they did whatever they did, they found out that I was still in there and they realized that we were twins. They realized that we were twins. And the other one didn't make it and I survived. And I believe I survived because somebody was praying for me. Somebody was praying for the coming of a warrior from his mother's womb. Are you hearing me? And I have fought. When you hear about my battles, you better shut your big mouth before you speak because you don't know my story. And you don't know my history. And there is a story always behind the story. So before you open your mouth, pray. Because you don't know my story. And when I was born, he tried everything. I lost three of my fingers. He tried to kill me. And this was how I came to know the Lord. When Jesus appeared to me on the bed of affliction and said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach. And for this reason you were born to be a witness unto me to the nations of the world. So you don't know my story. I know this devil. I've encountered him so many times. He's come into my hotel room so many times to fight me. To kill me. I've seen him. I know him. And he don't play fair. And life is not fair. And life don't give you what you deserve but what you fight for. And I came to tell somebody unless you fight you can't have the victory. The Bible says, he that overcomes will I give. So unless you overcome and you can't fight without a victory. Lift up your hands everybody right now. Shatakaha. Shetelehekes. Solavaki divyazus. Somebody reach out. I didn't come to pray for you. I came to pray with you. I came to tell you if you will pray through, you will go back home and have 100% victory over that crisis situation waiting for you in your church, in your house, in your family. God will show you the way out of it. And you can survive anything that the enemy throws at you. Throw your best weapon at me and I will still be here. Shataha. Ukasata, somebody open your mouth, somebody lift up your hand, somebody talk to the Father in other tongues. Shetele kevus, legevus, vus, vus, legriando shopata. Somebody open your mouth and tell the devil, I'm breaking through, I'm breaking through, I'm coming through. I'm not going to be stopped, I'm not going to be hindered, I'm coming through, I'm breaking through your defenses. Shata kabahosa. Shetele boho soto, le pele ke po soto lo boho. Shetele me ke tele boho sa. Shatala kahabos. Somebody, somebody, somebody move forward. Somebody move forward. Somebody just move forward here. Just move forward here and lift up your hands and somebody just cry out. Somebody just cry out. Just cry out. Somebody open your mouth and just cry out. God, I need you. I need a breakthrough. I need a fresh oil. I need a fresh anointing. Somebody cry out to the Father. Lekta tabosa, rata kapataya, rita kabota la mata, lebrende keto, la kapata la mata, le protoko pasita. Miracles, miracles, signs and wonders. Let it break forth. Sheteleke. Somebody, let it happen. Somebody, la kapata la moka, le tele moso. La grianda bosata. Somebody cry out. Somebody cry out. Somebody lift up holy hands unto the Father and cry out. Si talama kosata. Le palaka talamosa. Radebo si tele. Ketebolo kosita. 
la parakita la makadabosa. Jesus, 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 let it flow, let the oil flow, let the oil flow, let the rivers flow. Shatakabo, la patalabosa, rendele boko soto, peleke talamakoto, rembele boko polese, maragitele moko. Somebody cry out, somebody cry out. Malaka televoso, kose tele katolo, polombo le kitale mokose. I want you to look at me. I'm going to ask you to pray for somebody. I want you to hear me. The Bible said once in a year, an angel of the Lord came and troubled the waters, stirred up the waters. I want you to pray that God will cause a stirring in the waters, in the spirit of your brother and of your sister. I want you to look at me, church. When you leave this place, I beg you, I beseech you by the mercies of God, Stop praying fire service kind of prayers. The fire service kinds of prayers can deal with the end time demons attacking the church. I'll show you tomorrow how demons operate. They are disembodied spirits. They are persons without bodies. And I'll show you how they work through your own body. How they work through your friends. Working through your family. Working through your loved ones. Working through your environment. It's serious. And you can survive with this one time of fire service kinds of prayer where there is a fire outbreak and you move and there is an alarm and emergency and we go and we stop the fire and we go and pack the vehicle waiting for another fire break that kind of christianity prayer is not going to work the kind of prayers we need to pray right now is preventive prayers we need to pray whether there is crisis or no crisis. We need to pray to the point when the enemy cannot lift up his head. And it doesn't matter what he brings against you and I. We will still be here. Are you hearing me somebody? You can tell the devil, throw your best weapon at me to stop me. And the best in me will emerge. Are you hearing me somebody? Somebody say, don't even try. Don't even try. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, he said a group of men of God were talking and they said that Duncan Williams guy, he's an icon, he's a mystery, we don't get him. And he said, what is your secret? And I said, look at my knees, I showed him my knees. And I said, you see how dark my knees are? They are like the knees of a horse and a camel. I have learned to keep these knees on the ground. And it doesn't matter what you're facing and what you're going through. What is meant to kill you and to destroy you. If you know how to stay on your knees, God can turn it for your good. Are you hearing me, somebody? Shout yes. My God, I feel something in the name of Jesus. The other day, David had a problem. And in Psalm 55, when his son Absalom betrayed him and turned on him, and Ahithophel, the wisest man that ever lived and Solomon, whose counsels were so deep, turned against David and came together with the son to turn against his daddy. The Bible said, and David went to God and cried out and said, Lord, morning, noon, and night will I pray and cry out unto thee and you will hear me i love that say he will hear me he will somebody say he will hear me yes 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 i don't know what you're dealing with and i don't know what you're going through but i came to tell you if you will pray morning noon and night he will hear you i'm going to ask you to pray for somebody now this what are you going to do when Lazarus was raised from the dead, Jesus looked at the man raised from the dead. He had come alive spiritually. He had resurrected from the dead, but he was still bound with grave clothes. And there is somebody standing around you. He's a believer. She's a believer. Anointed of God. Alive in the spirit, but still bound with grave clothes. Bound with poverty. Bound with fear. Bound with restlessness. Bound with confusion. Bound with some kind of instability. Bound with stress. Bound with emotional grief. Bound with depression, oppression. Bound with one thing or the other. But tonight, I said tonight, 
we came to lose our brothers we came to release our sisters we came to set somebody free the bible said even the lawful captive shall be delivered and the captives of the mighty shall be delivered i don't care what you did wrong i don't care what went wrong when the hour of redemption come there is no mistake you have committed or done that the blood of jesus cannot take care of are you hearing me somebody and we come through the blood of jesus christ tonight to ask for the release and the freedom of the captive that you might live here with the songs of deliverance surrounding you take the hand of somebody right now hold somebody all over this place please pray for somebody Open your mouth right now. Lose somebody. Lose somebody. Release them right now. Lose the anointing of God upon their life. Tell the devil, lose my brother, lose my sister. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Somebody pray for somebody. Lose your brother. Lose your sister. Tell them, I lose you. I lose you. I free you up. I break your yoke. I destroy your yoke. I set you free. I command your release. Open your mouth. Command the release of somebody. Command their release. Lose somebody right now. Let's set the captives free. Let's release the songs of deliverance in the house. In the name of Jesus. Tell the devil, take your hands off my brother. Take your hands off my sister. Take your hands off my children. Take your hands off my finances. Come on somebody. Let it flow. Let it flow. Oh my God. Oh my God. Shata kabos. Leta kapasha. Lapata kapashata. Ratapala kapa. Epola parakata. Lebele kotolomota. Lerada gabade sete. Koparata kapala kata. My God, my God, le palemo soto, kotelemo palebos. Somebody lift it up, cry out. Somebody cry out. Somebody cry out. Shatalama kataya, mampala kapasa. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands, please. Lift up your hands all over this place. Lift up your hands. Pastor Ayo is coming with the word of God. I've known Pastor Ayo for over 30 years. And Papa will be coming on too. I want us to just cry out that the anointing will increase on the life of Pastor Ayo and Papa, that something will break in the atmosphere. That your freedom will come that your deliverance will come that your healing will come nothing happens until we pray somebody open your mouth and cry out somebody cry out somebody cry out somebody cry out let something break in the atmosphere let there be a breaking fall the exchange of power in the heavenlies hey katabos setele kopala mamodo mandelebo sitaya oh god Oh my God, oh my God, do it again, do it again, one more time, one more time, somebody pray one more prayer, pray one more prayer, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, lift it up, 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 somebody, take it higher, take it higher. Jesus, Jesus. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Say, Satan, take your hands off my brother. Take your hands off my sister. Take your hands off their finances. Take your hands off their emotions. Take your hands off their reputation. Take your hands off their families. In the name of Jesus, Satan, take your hands off my atmosphere. Take your hands off my ministry. Take your hands off my future. Your love. Take your hands off my breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your hands off. Now, somebody shout, hey, 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 
Come on, somebody put your hands together and shout and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hear me. Do this. When you go back to your hotel room, when you go back to your hotel room, will you take about 20 to 30 minutes to the Holy Ghost? And then at 12 midnight, can you take about 10, 20, 30 minutes and pray in the spirit? And then pray when you wake up about 6 in the morning again and keep it, do it tonight, do it tomorrow before you leave here and you will begin to see a lot of shiftings. And by the time you get back home, power will change hands. I said power will change hands. If you believe it, say yes. If you believe it, say hey, 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 hey. Well, come on, let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap and let's tell Bishop Nicholas Duncan Williams how much we love him, we honor him, give him a good God bless you. This record situation in childbearing and I was praying flying and the Lord said to me over 35,000 feet above sea level, he said when you land in D.C., go to the hospital and take your daughter out of the hands of the enemy. He said, son, Go to the hospital and by parental authority, take her out of the hands of the enemy and tell the grave, death, and hell, you can't have her. And everything was crazy until I went there and I stood by her bed and I said, girl, you are my baby. And I'm taking you out of the hands of the enemy. And I said, I invoke divine restraining order over death, over hell, and over the grave. You can't have her. She's mine. I take her. I buy her back. I redeem her by the blood from the hand of the enemy. Shataka. Somebody lift up your hands and pray in other tongues right now. Shataka. Shataka. Lakatabahaya. Malagadalavadaza. Somebody break forth. Let the river slow. Somebody open your mouth. Somebody break forth. Don't hold back. Shata. Ikataya. Madarakatanda. Meletekehe. Ishato. Lagreto. Melefasu. Ilapalala gite. E kitalamaga. Gadali shata. Ile katumalahaga. Ibalanda la mahaya. E igondolomo shatakaba. Jesus. Give me two minutes. Hear me. Chad, I want you to look at me. I'm not a dumb and a doom prophet. And it comes to pass within 24 hours. Are you hearing me, somebody? The Muslims pray five times a day all their lives as a lifestyle. The Jews pray three times a day all their life as a lifestyle. They do it whether they are happy or not, whether they are under attack or not, whether they are blessed or not, uh, whether, whether they are sad or happy. They just do it. It's a lifestyle. How many times does the believer pray a day? And you think you stand a chance because the Muslims are not just praying. They are invoking all kinds of entities. They're dealing with all kinds of forces in Pleiades, in Aturos, in Orion, in Mazarod, the Zodiacs, the powers of the underworld, the water kingdom. They are not just praying. They are dealing with white magic, black magic. They're dealing with different levels and dimensions of witchcraft. Then go teach my people how to pray. Because he said, I've taught you prayer through your affliction. You don't learn how to pray by reading a book. You learn how to pray by praying. Somebody say, hey, 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 hey. 
You don't know. You don't know what prayer is till the devil knocks your door and invades and, ta- and try to take your only child. Are you hearing me like a mother? Then something breaks forth in the inside of you and you will scream and pray like you've never prayed before and tell the devil, loose my baby. Take your hands off my baby. I take my baby back. One of my daughters was in a very deep. But I come to tell you, unless we adopt prayer as a lifestyle, he's going to smite the shepherds of the church. And many mega churches are going to go down. In the early 70s, in the early 70s, most of the mega churches, Papa will tell you, he's been around for a long time. And the only reason why he has prevailed and still remain anointed at the cutting edge. It's not because he's better than so many of his friends who have died and gone to be with the Lord. But I travel with Papa and even at his age, he will still fast. And he will still pray until the meeting is over before he eats. And there are so many preachers today who will never fast. And who will never pray because we know all the technicalities and we know what to say and make the people laugh and happy and all that. Oh, forget it. That is not going to change this world. The world is looking for power. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's looking for people that will say, that says the Lord. 